Okay, here we go with a drone video for a tract at Cedar Gap Hollow. We just took off uh, from the gravel easement road there and kicked up a little dust. Thought that looked kind of cool, so they left it in the video. Uh, we're toward the south side of the property. This is tract 55 at Cedar Gap Hollow. Survey map shows that it is 5.144 acres in size. Uh, very interesting property. This, um, uh, I'm showing here that it, it has not been on the market. Cedar Gap Hollow was a project we did several years ago. And uh, this tract um, just never made it onto the website, essentially. Uh, we're looking northerly. In a minute here, we, we've got a aerial photo that'll show you how this sits. Those are logs, or not logs, but that's brush and limbs. Uh, we've got a cat in the office today. Uh, there you can see the property, uh, 5.144 acres, uh, outlined in, in the red line. The entire east side borders the gravel easement road. There's a topo map. It's the highest by the road. It slopes down toward the center. Uh, so it's an unusual property. There, there are a couple spots that you certainly could potentially build or camp, um, but the thing just needs some cleanup. Uh, Cedar Gap area was logged four or five, six years ago. And uh, the loggers, you know, tend to leave piles. They call them, I guess, slash piles or whatnot. And um, the entire west side of, east side, I should say, of this property basically um, was used to pile brush and, and limbs, um, parts of the tree they had cut off that, that didn't go to the mill, they would pile up. And so that's what you see sitting on the east side of the property. You can see some other piles as well around Cedar Gap Hollow. Um, and there were quite a few more, but a lot of the people uh, just burnt the piles. So there are people that that bought the property and, and they used, uh, you know, the piles for, for firewood if they were on their own tracts. Uh, but at the same time, some people found it more convenient to just essentially touch a match to those piles and let them burn. You have to be extremely careful when you burn a brush pile. Um, especially a, a massive one like that uh, it absolutely needs to uh, basically be wet out so either have just rained or even a, a light rain while you're burning it and you want to have essentially no wind uh, because that thing will burn hot and and for quite a while we're looking northerly i think we freeze the video in a moment here uh, because it's a good kind of shot of the property it, so we're looking due north if you look at the road at the bottom of the screen, follow that line straight north up to the other curve in the road up there, and kind of the, I guess the, the D shape, or whatever you want to say, that's the property. So that, that east side uh, is where the, uh, where the limbs and, and that kind of stuff are. And then actually there's some uh, tall timber toward the middle and the west side, as you can see with that um, aerial shot. So it's just a tract that we had always had it in the back of our heads that at some point the guys would get out and, and create a driveway and, and clear a site. Um, and it just never happened as, as we did other things and, and other projects and, and stuff came up. Uh, we never did that. Um, we never went and burnt that monstrous brush pile because um, essentially you, you need someone there for at least a full day because once it starts, uh, once it really catches, uh, it just won't stop and it will burn hot for many hours. Um, and so if you don't have the right weather conditions, you do not want to set that on fire. And we just never had anybody available to, um, to really do it and, and do it safely. So uh, that would be a way to potentially improve the property quite easily would be to uh, get rid of that, that brush pile. Uh, you could. Uh, potentially rent a large mulcher or something like that but I mean that would take days and days and days uh, so the easiest thing to do would be uh, if, you, if you want to do that get a hold of uh, Wright County let them know that you're interested in burning a very large brush pile and they would put you in touch with probably the volunteer fire department in that area and they would uh, more than likely not only offer some guidance but they may want to uh, burn it for you. Obviously, I can't put words in their mouth, but they may want to use it as a 
some kind of training exercise or at a minimum be aware of it uh, because if, if that fire gets away from you, of course, you're, you're liable for any, any damages it may cause. Uh, so you want to be aware of that. But um, that being said, uh, there's certainly no reason you would have to to get rid of those uh, brush piles or, or limbs and tops or whatnot. I mean, they can stay right there and, and continue to rot away. Uh, in fact, this particular drone video is probably probably one or two years old. Um, it looks like it was taken probably th two or three or four years after the login was done. Uh, and as I'm looking at the, the timestamp here, this looks like, it looks like it says 20, 2020 or 2021. So um, there's been two years worth of mother nature since this video was taken. So some of that stuff may have rotted away. Some of the smaller trees may have grown up. Um, but this does give you a good idea of what the property looks like. Uh, as far as building sites, uh, you can check the listing page. Because of the setback from the road, uh, it's a privacy buffer and uh, a potential utility easement. That's all the easement roads at Cedar Gap Hollow. Um, you can't build just anywhere on this property. So be, because of kind of the shape of it, uh, just look at the, the aerial map within the listing. And we've marked out what we think are two spots that could potentially be good sites for building or camping. Uh, in fact, I think we have a ground video that briefly shows uh, both of those spots. There's one on the north and one on the south. So, I mean, if you've been looking for a, a, a good chance to get a property at a, a lower price um, than it would normally be, uh, this, this might be what you've been looking for. I mean, this is something that um, definitely would need a little attention to, to really be even close to its potential. If those brush piles were, were removed or gotten rid of, uh, and there was a driveway and a, and a site created, this could be a gorgeous property. The way the property lies, you could potentially have a pond. Um, very private. Any track at Cedar Gap Hollow um, or any property accessed with a, a gravel road, you do want a four-wheel drive, truck or SUV. Uh, definitely out here you would want that to be able to uh, come and go from your property without having to worry too much about the weather. But again, this is one that, that uh, has not been on the market before. So you would be the first one to, to get in there and uh, start working on this property on track 55. The entire west side, this is in uh, Wright County, Missouri. The entire west side of this property is the county line. So, um, Directly to the west of this property is Webster County. So if you want to do a Dukes of Hazard thing and go from, from one county to another so the, uh, the sheriff can't get you, here's a property for that. No, I I, not only don't do that, but I don't think that really works in real life. Cool track, though. That's track 55, uh, instantacres.com. Everything we sell on the website we offer with 100% uh, owner financing uh, you can visit the website to check availability or um, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube there will be a direct link in the video description um, which will give you more information about this property instantacres.com